everybody has a question whether to join a established multinational company or a startup in fact we have had a couple of discussions around working for startups is better or working for corporates is better or the psus is better likewise there are so many questions and in addition to that few people also have a question around why don't i get into my own entrepreneurship likewise there are maybe so many questions revolving in your head at this moment and today we are going to unleash the most coveted topic pros and cons of working for startups nikesh jain is an entrepreneur in learn tech space we have hosted him on episode 163 one of the most popular episodes on the guiding voice platform and he covered an interesting topic career progression to middle level managers and i always enjoy talking to him because he is to the point and he leads a lot of candid conversations and he shares his expertise without holding anything back and we are extremely excited to have him back to cover the most coveted topic the pros and cons of working for startup and this is the guiding voice podcast series the guiding voice for a better future friends i am your host navin samala just a fellow it professional but a passionate learner on a mission to shape the careers and lives of millions across the globe through the guiding voice we drive conversations that matter conversations that add value to your life and your career successful leaders across the globe share their knowledge and wisdom with the world through our platform so that our audience will acquire more knowledge by tuning into the guiding voice per every minute than any other podcast in this space and thank you so much for tuning in we are extremely pleased to have nikesh come back and do this episode with us nikesh hearty welcome and i'm super excited super thrilled to have you join me today as well i mean thank you very much for having me it's always pleasure to talk to you so nikesh let's uh, jump into the topic experience working for startups like i've seen your career trajectory like uh, you worked for established companies as well as uh, startups and which were in nascent stage and which grew to a billion dollar organizations and right now you are leading your own venture what what has been your experience working for startups i have uh, thoroughly enjoyed navin uh, you know i've been uh, you know if if i if i divide my 26 year of career uh, i just realized that i work for 50% of the time i work for startups both in us and india so you know uh, i go and look back to that journey and you know uh, uh, really really say you know i enjoyed it it was fun experience learned a lot uh, and then by god grace you know i was able to make some money out, out of that those startups as well so the experience has been fulfilling i would say i mean in whatever typical purpose you uh, work for a startup or uh, i mean those were fulfilled so yeah my experience has been fabulous so can you talk about the pros and cons for uh, startup from your perspective see the pros are definitely you know, i'll talk about some pros some of the advantages one gets uh, one if one get gets to work for a startup startup is a small setup right so uh, you you go and work for a company which is like 20 people 100 people in some cases 200 people now depending on the stage where you are going in one of the biggest pro is like your learning abilities learning opportunities i should if you are working for a 20 people company you are wearing multiple hats so you you, you know you are a developer you, at times you are a tester also you, you are deploying also so from the tech point of view you get to learn a lot now you know if you are in in, in implementation teams uh, if it's enterprise software i mean you get to talk to your customers you get to your exposure is like huge so the learning opportunity is always there and, and then startups you know they it, it, they run at really 200 miles per hour any startup i mean you know you join you know uh, they they run very fast so uh, with that your learning curve is as such and then of course you know the second second oper- second pro uh, is like you know so one is learning right second is a- an opportunity to create wealth so only startups offer you that let me be very clear about that part you may be working for um, especially i'm talking about uh, the li- people at uh, Uh, engineer level or the mid management level i'm not talking about people you know who are uh, at a c level but but for people at that level if you want to create wealth for yourself at that age of the li- life uh, you know a startup is the way forward if it works out for you so in a second uh, pro uh, or uh, a potential is like you know you can make a lot of wealth if you are participating in that startup like you know the founders have shared some equity with you and if the startup does well you know you you can create wealth for yourself in 4 5 6 years whatever time frame we are talking about here con if one con i can talk about it like uh, uh, let, let me talk about couple of them 
one like again you know it's related to the previous one uh, because a startup small setup you end up doing a lot of things at times you know if, if you if you keep doing that you may get burnt out one obvious one right you know if you if you are not there and if you are just working 16 17 hours a day for how long you can do that so hopefully you know hopefully when you get into that mode that startup grows and then you get more help so you can hire more people and then you know you you, you can delegate some of your work so that is one definitely definitely a potential con you work extras and you might get burnt out uh, the second thing you know it may not provide you that job security which you are looking for the startups are always uh, always a risky business i mean more risk more reward right as as simple as that so if you join a startup uh, for some reason if it does not go well they are not able to raise the next round or they burnt very fast uh, you, you know they might lay you off very well possible right uh, so I'll, I'll share one example uh, navin as usual uh, i was working for this startup in us this is back in 2000 i joined them i think and the bubble bus hadn't happened it was like you know it was just building up i would say so this was an enterprise software startup 100 people company first during christmas i joined in november of that year during christmas they let go about 10 people in the sales because they figured out you know uh, they can't uh, afford th- those people then i remember in january immediately after christmas uh, january uh, one of the sundays i get a call from my uh, manager her name is heidi uh and by that time i think we were 95 people company uh, she calls me and says nikesh you know tomorrow we are laying off 75 people 75% of the company i'm calling you because you are not one of them now you know my heart was pump- pumping like you know yeah. uh, uh, we had just delivered delivered a baby and then you know uh, and i was on h1 so basically if i lose my job the only thing i can do is like you know come back to india i think yeah. so uh, went back to office uh, uh, i mean you know went to office on monday 8 o'clock and i saw that company i mean everybody was packing and people were crying now that experience made me in the sense like you know then i realized now startup is such a risky business and then after that also like you know we had we had we had money for only 3 uh, or 4 months for those remaining 25 odd people right and we were trying to sell this company to uh, other uh, other companies and i think microsoft came uh, the couple more companies came luckily in month of april or may we were able to sell off uh, so some a uh, public limited company bought us and since then it was okay but think about my journey uh, you know those three four months were literally like you know uh, i went through so much trauma like oh, anything could have happened right so yeah that is one of the cons the job security can't expect from startups i i can totally relate to that and uh, moving ahead Nikesh, you have uh, started this edurigo and uh, before that also you worked for uh, another company uh i think in pune right if i remember it correctly that was also Correct. startup and uh, yeah so throughout this journey right what are some of the toughest lessons that you have learned especially as an entrepreneur because we go with some vision we jump into it without without probably uh anticipating something might happen right likewise we will come across some bouncers on our way and how do we deal with that and also what are some toughest lessons yeah so uh, so a perfect question i mean you know Uh, as an entrepreneur this is my first experience honestly so it's been 2 years in fact you know in next 5 uh, days we'll be completing 2 years uh, of uh, edirigo i think uh, as an in- I was, I, i'm i'm an engineer by uh, by nature by heart so building product was easy for me i mean it's always been easy a uh, business for me one thing which i'm learning selling it basically you know making that money bringing that money i mean uh, so one of the tough experience is uh, like you know how do you position your product how do you convince people to use your product and i'm sure you talk to any founder this is the toughest nut to crack right the other challenge which i have learned recently and you know i wish i could change it some way uh, how do i uh, become a startup from the day one which has 10 years of experience you know what i'm saying you know everybody expects like so one of the I, i'll share an example and this is this broke my heart uh, like you know one company you know uh, we have a amazing software amazing platform so we showed it to one of the good logos in india right uh, it's a well known uh, company uh, i really wanted that logo so uh, they did poc with us uh, everything went well and they were using an american companies uh, platform and we, we we were replacing them because some of the problems which they were facing that american company was not able to solve and we solved that with like you know a click of a finger so everything went well 
be- just before signing you know there was an org change and the new uh, new head of a function came on board you know when people went to her that we are we are signing up with this company and she said oh well you know what uh, this company is just too small right now they are just two years old and i'm like how does it matter right we are solving your problem uh, so so and that deal actually was taken away from us just because of that it it, it broke my heart and i said you know my 26 year experience building those you know market platforms uh, you know selling it to who is who of the world uh, yeah right? uh, that experience doesn't matter so, so so that's the that's the challenge with startups right in the initial few years so now i'm waiting for me to age like gracefully like when i have become four years and i can say you know don't worry you know we are we are four year old company but again jokes apart i mean you know this is uh, convincing people uh, it's it's the most difficult part uh, you know of my journey so far but it it sounds uh, too odd for me like because at times it's all about what's in the product right why should we really care or concern be concerned about the age of the company it's uh... no I, i did some research on that so i talked to some of my investors i uh, some of the so uh, so and, and you know it 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 plays in people's mind and i think there's some truth to it navin uh, let's be honest about it like you know what if we fold overnight what if something goes wrong i mean people have those kind of things right and those decision with all due respect to them those decision makers when they take decisions i mean they are also putting their rapo at a stake right if something goes wrong a uh, finger will be pointed at them so i understand that yeah. but at the same time you know uh, as i said you know uh, people need to trust the startups like you know these people they should do your own due diligence but uh, but uh, you know definitely the kind of hunger a startup will have i can guarantee you a established player won't have and the yeah. kind of problems we will able to solve the kind of customer service uh, we will be able to provide nobody else can provide yeah so i think you know that's one message if if uh, if people are listening to this and you are one of the so 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 uh, decision makers for a startup give them a chance if yeah. you don't give them a chance who will yeah. right and we all are entrepreneur we have done something in our life you know so i was vp engineering two big companies yeah right and yeah. i was I, i had customers like big customers like google uh, apple and those kind of those were my customers johnson and johnson right served those customers so yeah. i have that experience right uh, behind in my belt yeah so yeah but again you know as i said you know convincing people is a difficult one yeah can conquer with you all right so now uh, moving ahead people have this question especially the freshers okay should i esta- uh, join an established organization okay with xyz package or should i join a startup right we always say as you pointed out uh, earlier start joining startups is always risky and the more the risk more the reward as well right so what are uh, other factors okay which will help um, them decide before joining a startup what should one look for before joining the startup right? yes. what kind of research one should do yeah. oh, a great question navin uh, thanks for asking me this so i I'll, i'll some of the experience i'll share with uh, with fold in hand it is not to show off it is just to share my experience like you know what worked for me so so the keep that in that spirit please see uh, before you join a, why are we joining a startup one question we have to answer as i said it does not provide you job security but still if you want to do that a uh, one one primary reason is like you know you want to learn quickly right uh, you will get those opportunities now before joining a startup what kind of research you should do so you know uh, if you are joining a startup i mean look at the size of the startup it just what stage they are in in their journey so a startup the journey starts from like you know it it is just founded angel and founder have put in their money there so that's like you no know, founders money then in some stages like you know this is where adirigo is today we are angel invested so there are some people who are our friends family or you know some people who believed in angel we call them angel they have invested in us then comes the series a uh, or pre series uh, you know some money has come in which is not even called series a so there are di- different stages of investment right and and those stages are basically linked to the revenue of the company or growth of the company so series a series b series c series d and all that right so you, first thing you have to see where the startup is right so that one thing uh, definitely uh, i'll pay a lot of attention to then the second thing how much money they have you know what is their burn rate how much how much runway they have so let's say let's say you know you're joining a company which is series a company we have just raised series a money right now you know without without raising series b how much runway they have how do you decide that how do you figure that out you look at their burn rate right how much they are burning 
per month or per year right so and those are easy calculations it's not difficult calculation and I, I, as i said you know before joining my pune startup uh, i did all those calculations so you know so you you should look at the burn rate you can find out burn rate like you know number of employees they have you know you can do back uh, back of the envelope calculation and you know how much mo- money they are earning burning every month and based on the money they raise so you know they have two years of money so even if they generate zero revenue at least no my job is secure for two, two years theoretically speaking correct then uh, we talked about technology of course you know you should look at the technology so a startup will not be working on n number of things they will be working on like very few four or five things so you know that does that technology attract you does it fit into your profile that's one thing because you, know, you will go very deep in those uh, in those technologies that's something I, i would pay attention to we talked about burn rate and then the, i think the uh, navin you know most important thing uh, i would look for uh, is founders most important thing by far right uh, founders or co-founders you, you know uh, what they have done in past uh, i'm not looking for a successful exit or, or whatever but you know I, i would just look at their experience what they have done in their past life because these are the people who are sort of you know will be driving the company right Sec- so when when i'm talking about founders uh, you know uh, i would definitely try to meet them so uh, depending on the stage like even if that company is 100 people company typically founders will talk to you during interview process so you should definitely try you should insist actually that you know uh, uh, can i can i meet founders and then when you are meeting founders you have done the research uh, on them try to figure out uh, how, how these people are how friendly these people are what is their philosophies and all those things the reason i am saying that your life will depend on your founders behavior the culture so when i say behavior i'm talking about culture if your founder is abusive if you found out that you know that person is abusive that he or she is abusive i can guarantee you that culture will percolate down and then you will find that your managers will be abusive because that's the norm right so uh, so i'll share my uh, example like you know when i was doing this research these are all the things i looked at the funding the burn rate uh, the kind of customers one more one more thing which i missed like you know you want to know w- what traction they have in the market so of course you, know, you want to do some research over the customers if they have they already acquired some customers or you know you know they are, they, they have a pipeline uh, so you, and, and you can ask all these questions these are all very relevant question to ask what is your pipeline you know when do you plan to uh, break even like you can ask them if you just don't uh, grow Will you, when when will you break even and all those things right so when i was doing my research i did lot of research on founders and, and to be very honest i joined for that so uh, the the pune based company i'm talking about i just went for founders i fell in love with one of them like you know uh, the culture the kind of humbleness i saw and i said you know i want to work with these people because you know whatever happens i will get to learn something and i was damn right so so these are the few things you know i will i will pay attention to navin when i am looking for mm-hmm. a startup yeah extremely useful <laughs> extremely useful and now uh, uh, when it comes to joining a startup right some sometimes they may not offer huge packages but they give you good amount of stock options and all right so how should somebody balance the stock options versus salary okay see uh, you know very easy uh, question for me to answer you are joining a startup let's say you know you have options to join a well established company versus startup what's the difference the difference uh, salary wise you know in all likelihood they will match your salary or they might give you a little less which is fine you are taking a chance here right you are taking a chance because you want to make something big so why why not to take a chance with full heart and then you know give uh, give a chance to your stock options so uh, if i were i can advise one thing don't look at your salary package so much when you are joining a startup look at stock options you should join a startup again you know you will get a stock option only when you are joining let's say till series c or series d time beyond that typically i have seen like you know companies don't give stock options uh, that freely because there are restrictions right Be- uh, they, are, they are getting into territory where giving stock options are difficult and by the time the valuation also has gone up where stock option may not make so much sense if you're talking about a pre series or a series a company or series b i think that's the right time to get into a company okay after doing all the due diligence and that's when you know you ask for stock option and typically at the time now you know you get a stock option is a price which is very interesting 
So if I take a US company example, if I take, I mean, you know, this option price in US dollar, and I think we'll discuss some of this in more details, those will be in cents or, you know, single digit dollar. Or if it is an India-based company like 10 rupees, 20 rupees, or those kind of things, those are very attractive prices. So your options are at that price. And from that price, when company grows, there's no limit. This, this prices can, and if you are the right startup, these prices can touch $30, $40, $100, even $200. And think about the kind of money you are making there then, right? Depending on the number of stock options you have. So I would say, I would suggest like, you know, salary versus uh, stock options. If you're taking a chance with a startup, anyway, you have taken a big chance. So then I would suggest like, you know, uh, go big and then negotiate for a uh, stock option. Again, taking my example, uh, when I was all these startups, again, you know, uh, my preference was stock option. That's the only thing I, I negotiated on. And, and, you know, that gives confidence to founders as well, that this guy is coming for us not for the money because you know when i have options i am sort of married to that company for a certain time and i'm believing in that company because my stock option will make me money only when the company is successful so you know i'm just behaving like a founder like uh, you know give me stock options because i personally feel like you guys we, together will make it big so i'm part of the journey so i'm giving more confidence to founders as well right so uh, so that's the that's the answer salary stock options Pay more attention to stock options if you can. Continuing on this uh, stock options, Nikesh, how about the vesting schedule? Oh, all right. So, uh, so vesting, uh, let me just define that first. Uh, so, vesting uh, is spelled as like V E S T, vest, right? And I N G. Uh, vesting is schedule, like, you know, so when, when company gives you stock options, they give you stock options at a certain price so that, you know, uh, you can buy your stock at that price. So, let's say they're given you a stock option at 50 cents. So uh, once they are exercisable, like once they are wasted, uh, you can buy them and they become your stock, right? Your shares. So that vesting schedule is typically divided Navin, uh, in, uh, in like four years, typically, and I'll give you a couple of uh, versions of it. So, uh, so this four, let, let's say, let's say you, you, one is given 2000 stock option. So that 2000 stock options will get divided into four chunks, 25% each for each year. So this is spread over four four years. First year is typically called cliff period. Cliff period. So you know you join the company on let's say first of November you join that company for the entire year nothing will get vested. Vested means like they are becoming yours. You get ownership or you you can exercise them. You get authority to buy those stocks. That is called vesting. So once you on your first anniversary, so you joined in 2022 first November. 2023 the 25% of those stocks that in this case 500 stocks will be exercisable right and then the next next 500 next 25% in the next second year then third year and fourth year now good thing like remaining one 1500 they will not take years to uh, waste you know after that the typical period is like monthly period so uh, that 1500 stocks will get divided into 36 months the remaining 3 years and every month a part of that will be wasted so you know it becomes it will become exercisable so that's one version of it that's the most 80% of the companies follow this or uh, now there are some companies there is no legal binding here to the company they can decide the vesting schedule so some companies may have 5 years some companies may say you know your cliff itself is 3 years or some companies may say, well, you know what, there is no cliff, there is no uh, monthly schedule. Uh, after three years, you get all the stock options. So people can do that. Typically, using stock options, companies are trying to retain you, obviously, right? That's why you know, they want to spread it so, so that you know, on the day one, you don't get everything and you know, it becomes yours. So they want you to earn that. So some companies uh, you know, will just say, after five years, you will get everything. So you're stuck for five years. Yeah. But in this case, the one which I just talked about, this is, which is the most common and all my companies had this one, uh, like, you know, first year cliff, 25%. And then after that, every month I was getting some stock options, which were becoming my, uh, which were becoming exercisable. Yeah. So I could buy them. Right. Yeah. So that's the vesting schedule. I hope I answered it uh, properly, Naveen. It's clear. 
yeah it is quite informative because even i was not aware of these nuances especially for startups because i have been associated with the corporates major corporation so far and in one of the companies what they did is they had a two year lock in period and you can yeah. only waste it after two years and likewise yeah. every year they allot you based on the performance and all yeah. but this a um, one year cliff period is something new to me even in learning so i'm sure it will be beneficial to the audience as well yeah. same and, thing applies uh, to your rsus just, just yeah. you know just uh, rsus the restrictive stock unit which typically a uh, established company like general electric you yeah. work for i work for sap yahoo yeah. so they give you rsus so rsus follow similar kind of schedule so their vesting schedule like you know if they give you 2000 rsus uh, you know 25% of that will become exercisable basically those stock rsus are actually actual stocks so you know you don't have to you just sell them right uh, once you uh, after the vesting happens so right. everybody follows that and as i said in some companies i don't appreciate that uh, which follow this uh, longer cliff period because you know uh, you get stuck with them and yeah. uh, i don't appreciate that yeah it it is almost like you don't want to pull out because of that and uh, person might work half hearted right <laughs> just yeah, because yeah. <laughs> he's stuck yeah i mean you know uh, i will be talk about that in some cases trust me you know even exercising the stock options is a tough nut right. so i'll talk about that uh, yeah so, yeah maybe yeah. you can you can uh, shed more light on that exercising the stock options stock options uh, once they are wasted right now the question is like you know uh, what, what do i do with them right they are wasted now they are they are mine uh, to exercise so before that you know we should talk about what are the exit opportunities for me right so exit opportunity is like you know how do i make money out of it so one obvious exit opportunity in avin is like when my when my company goes ipo right when company goes ipo i can trade that on stock exchange whichever stock exchange is trading right but tell, let me tell you let me tell you this uh, going ipo 90% of the cases or rather i would say 95% of cases you won't see that very difficult it's a difficult business right going ipo is like you know 10 12 year journey now are you going to stay with that company for that long we don't know there are a lot of if 12 years is a very long period right so uh, even for founders it is very long period so one exit opportunity is the ideal one for everybody is like a company goes ipo and then you start you basically you know, sell your stocks there the other exit opportunities are like uh, an acquisition happens right so you are wasted let's say you are 25% wasted today and a company come a third party comes a private equity or whatever it is they buy your company the entire company so in that case they will have to buy your options as well right so in that case you know what will happen let's say your options are at $1 and this company who is coming and acquiring it is acquiring at $30 what it will do it will pay you $29 you don't have to exercise in that case it's a cashless transaction next paycheck you will see that $29 into whatever number of stocks were wasted they exercisable for you minus tax so you know i'm just adding the tax part also there so minus tax that money will come into your bank account and typically you know uh, it's like a bonus account this is how it is treated it gets added to your salary so you are paying basically 30% tax on that in some case if, if you are in the highest bracket 39% and you are paying it to the government where you are working so if you are working in india although you are working for an american company if you you know if you are in india you will be paying to indian government and company will deduct it you don't have to worry about it you know before they pay you the money so so coming back to the exercising like you know why should i exercise so one is acquisition i don't have to exercise somebody came they bought me and automatically it got exercised second thing let's say let's say you know you're quitting the company or you get laid off right now 12 years anything can happen i mean you know so let's say you know you quit after 3 years so you were 75% wasted out of 2000 let's say you had 1500 which were exercisable what do you do so you want to exercise then you have to take a decision whether you should exercise or not so once that date happen exit date whether you quit voluntarily or you get fired you know you have 90 days to exercise that's the legal binding on the company at it themselves right so you have 90 days to arrange for the money and then exercise now there's a tricky part to it the tricky part is like you know when you exercise how do you exercise you send for, for those 1500 stock options priced at $1 because your options were given at $1 so you have to arrange for $1500 correct and you have to send that money to the uh, company the finance department and there's a process for that so uh, i mean these are all standard things 
now you know that's not easy there is a there's a caveat to it and people need to understand that uh, you know a small problem so let's say your stock options were given at one dollar now company th- this were given at the pre series time the company's stock uh, value that time was you know maybe one dollar that's why they gave you one dollar but company is growing now the stock value is growing share value is growing now let's say it has become twenty one dollar when you are exercising yeah so you are making a profit one dollar was your option price the stock has become twenty one dollar value so when you are exercising those fifteen hundred you will end up paying tax on that paper profit twenty twenty one minus one which is twenty dollar that's your profit the government yeah. will say well you are making profit pay tax tax and that tax will be forty percent close to forty percent right that is eight dollar roughly so now you have to pay eight dollar per stock plus one dollar nine dollar now nine dollar multiplied by fifteen hundred that is the kind of money you will have to pay to exercise now that's a lot of money now you know the risk is like you know uh, if you purchase a stock and the stock doesn't do well it goes down or company closed down after that that's that you lose all the money and what if most importantly you now whatever that $1 you may not worry about that's a small amount but this $8 is huge money and now let's say we were just talking about 1500 let's say you have 10000 now suddenly you know that tax money itself becomes so so huge so that's where i think you need to work out your exercising strategy so it will be beneficial for you to exercise when the fair market value that $21 is the fair, called fair market value that's not the market value market value could be different because you know they might attach premium to it right so you it is beneficial for you to exercise those stock options when the fair market value is your stock price and the fair market value there is not huge of the difference so let's say you know you joined at series a time and during series c time also fair market value was 3 or 4 dollar i would exercise i would exercise keeping all these things in mind right because now the the tax amount i am paying the 1 dollar i have to pay anyways right yeah. that's the option price but the tax liability is basically just 2 dollar now or 3 dollar or uh, sorry my benefit uh, the 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 profit i am making is 3 dollar so tax liability becomes another 1 dollar so instead of uh, you know uh, 1 dollar i am just paying 2 dollar which is still doable but if that goes up then i think you know in some cases i know uh, the pe- people if, even if they want to exercise they can't exercise because of this tax thing because mm-hmm. com- and company has done very well so mind you the company has done very well your stock option price was cents or lower dollar but the company's price has become 50 dollar or 100 dollar there is no way in the world you can exercise i got stuck into one of such things it was very deep. i mean you know uh, again i'm not boasting i'm just sharing because my exercise just to exercise i needed three or four cr oh. how do i bring that money where do i bring that money from now in that case some companies no uh, companies also do realize that problems uh, and then you know uh, in some cases companies become kind enough to give an option that you don't have to exercise even if you quit you know don't worry you know we'll take care of it so you you sign an agreement and then you know those stock options are there but just imagine if those companies were not that kind then you know how do you exercise you just basically just you, you worked hard and you had to leave everything on the table yeah. because i cannot go to a bank and say give me pcr so that then i can uh, exercise my stock option and the kind of risk i'm taking what if that company goes down mm. right so so you know you know a lot a lot, lot of people would face this problem mm-hmm. so 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 to exercise coming back to our original question be smart exercise a, a, in at the right time one more advantage which i will i will talk about are exercising early you, you know if you own see stock options you are not owning these stocks remember this stock options are just an option the english word option you have option to buy when you exercise you are basically exercising your option and that's where you purchase the stock so once you purchase the stock that becomes yours and if you keep it with you for 2 years the long term capital gain comes into play if i buy the stock immediately sell it whatever profit i make i have to pay 30% or whatever bracket i am in that tax because that basically gets added to my income but if i buy the stock and keep it with me for 2 years you know i have this advantage of long term capital gain and then you know uh, that tax is just to 20% so i suddenly say a lot of tax as well so you know for that purpose i think i would suggest people uh, people especially who are working for startup consider buying it you know if you can take some risk but you know it is always advantages uh, advantages if it goes beyond your limit then i think you are stuck yeah 
Ma- makes sense. Uh, thank you for sharing that amazing stuff. Actually, like it, it is. Uh, <laughs> and uh, as I said earlier, it is learning to me as well. And uh, we are unleashing a lot of stuff on the tax part. You said the forty percent, right? And uh, that forty percent is applicable to everybody, irrespective of the tax bracket, or how does it work? Uh, it is not. So it de- it depends on like you know the the stock money basically gets added to your salary of that mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. that financial mm-hmm. year right right now you know typically if it is stock option i'm assuming like it's going to be huge money so automatically it will change your tax bracket right yeah. so after adding up that money and your annual salary whichever tax bracket you fall in okay. your payroll will deduct tax accordingly okay. most of the cases you know uh, if it is huge sum you know you go to the highest uh, bracket so that's why i said 40% if, if if that money is small then of course you know if you are in 30% bracket you will pay that much Okay, got it. Now I have an interesting question about the co-founders. Uh, typically, what should we do if we are starting our own venture? We we come across few talented individuals who complement our skills, and at times, initially there will be a lot of momentum. But as we progress down the lane, right, they, we lose that particular steam. So how do we be cautious and make sure that they are energized equally as our as us co-founders, right? Yeah, co-founders. uh see it's a, it's natural progression i mean i would say in some cases like you know uh, let's say there are two or three co-founders in a company now are they all committed in the same with the same intensity everybody has a different goal in life the co-founders have come together because you know goal look common but two three years of journey you, you know uh, if things are not in, in all likelihood things won't go as plan as per plan as, as per your plan right so you need to keep talking to them like you know it happens to us also like you know we keep founders we keep talking and you know uh, we have differences as well right so we overcome those differences and we respect each other uh, as founders i think you know we have huge respect uh, for each other so we we listen to each other like sometimes he will give in sometimes i'll give in and all those things right so uh, as long as you are sh- able to show that growth i'm sure you know everybody will be uh, equally involved as i said uh, bringing in money uh, is that most difficult part because that that is one thing you see if, if all all are getting we all have to run our houses so the, there has to be some money which is which should be coming in right so as long as those things are taken care of i think you know uh, life will be set so in some cases like you know getting the funding at the right time becomes very critical to keep that momentum going i think there are a lot of factors which are there if i'm seeing light at the end of the tunnel i would be in no matter what and, and my message to everybody like you know this i keep telling to myself be patient i'm a very impatient guy ask my wife she will tell me like man you are so impatient right so you know so that's what i'm learning i have to be patient you know it takes it takes 10 to 12 years to see any result for first 4 or 5 years don't expect too much if, i'm not talking about those founders you know some companies they get lot of funding but they the way they go up they might come down very easily so you know i'm talking about the organic growth is very important organic growth is the important very important thing so you know go slow uh, build that foundation very strong foundation and once the foundation is strong of whatever business you are doing then automatically things will happen and it takes one day i'm telling you i've seen that it takes one day one customer which will just come and then basically you know the rest will be history no be patient just wait for the day yeah. quite quite inspirational and encouraging all right so this has been serious conversation nikesh let's add some spice all right <laughs> so i have a new set of uh, uh, rapid fire questions and let me fire the first bullet out of rapid fire in which subject were you best in the school oh that's an easy one math by far <laughs> i mean that was my favorite subject and i was, oh, I was good at that that's nice and what scares you Nik- uh, nikesh what scares me yeah sir there are a lot of things one thing uh, if i may yeah i mean this is personal uh, <laughs> i i'm always especially after this covid you know i'm always scared of losing somebody very close to me yeah and during covid i saw that from very close quarters and i'm sure we all and some yeah. of us might have lost people so that scares me like I, i'll just share uh, I, i was this was uh, october of uh, i think 2020 we have just started up and i was meeting my team in jaipur uh, and then covid if you remember uh, the first wave had just 
gone down and then still the impact was there my mother called me and she said i lost my smell and i was sitting in the room with my team uh, trust me you know i almost died right there i was so scared because you know everything goes into your mind that time and i took the next flight available and i went back to uh, indore and uh, you know my doctor friend told me don't go home you know send a driver because we, we we had to take her to hospital i did not do i did not think and i said if she, uh, you know uh, i just took my car uh, from my friend's place went to my home asked my mother to sit in the car of course you know, we, we were taking all the precautions and everything and i said let's go to the hospital my friend doctor friend warned me but don't do that i told him if she can take risk of carrying me for 9 months this is just 9 kilometers to the hospital i should you know so i did not even think now those few things basically you know scares me and i'm sure you know it will uh, it will happen some day you know we all have to go uh, from this world but you know that's something i'm still trying to overcome so i keep playing that in my mind so yeah. sorry long answer but you know it yeah. was it was a little emotional for me yeah yeah same same with me i have lost a few dear ones and it is uh, uh, completely indigestible like uh, no. didn't even expect and especially wave 2 like we were worried the moment phone rings we were so scared to attend what who is exactly. going to deliver what kind of news and all and it happened on a single day where we had to hear three to four bad news and uh, yeah i can relate to that so moving to my next question what success means to you nikesh Oh, okay. So, uh, see again. You know, I think in the last interview, I said I don't use three words: success, regret, and failure. <laughs> right? But I will. I, I'll this time. I'll, I'll let let me let me answer this differently. See, success means di- uh, different things to different people. Right? I'll I'll take my example, Eddie Rigo's example. So, you know, August two thousand twenty, I had hung my boots. I didn't want to work for corporate. A lot of people before that also asked me, why don't you start your own company? And Uh, you, you know, I I I would say it's not my cup of tea. Entrepreneurship is not cup my cup of tea, and the reason was not like you know I didn't want to do it. I was scared to do it. I was in my comfort zone. I loved my salary every month. The salary pay paycheck which comes, I used to love it. So during those time also, you know, I wouldn't uh, give it away. So for me, the starting up. See today also, if honestly speaking, I'm saying this in a lot of humbleness uh, with uh, folded hand. Uh, if i go to market i'm sure i can grab an offer which is 2 cr 3 cr and i had those kind of opportunities c level opportunities i have given up those things and i started up and for 2 years navin i have not made a single penny yeah right yeah to me that success overcoming that inhibition yeah that success to me now whether eddie rigo will make big or not i don't know but for me eddie rigo was successful the day it was founded by me yeah because when i overcame that inhibition Yeah. So yeah, so this is how I define success. So yeah, that's yeah. my answer. No, oh, mind blowing. <laughs> it will become big for sure. Edurigo will become big. I I, I can so. see that passion uh, always. Like you have, it is your baby. Like <laughs> I, I just hope so. You know. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your wishes. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And and what is something that you don't like doing? Ah, okay. There are a lot of things, but you know, we'll just keep it uh, this time, and I'll just try to keep that in corporate domain, diplomacy. and politics two things you know uh, very difficult for me to do mm-hmm. diplomacy when i say you know i cannot sugar coat things diplomacy is not a bad word by the way i'm saying you know we all need to learn a little bit of diplomacy the way you say things for me like i'm very direct guy so uh, uh, i cannot do politics one thing uh, i cannot do diplomacy and I, in 26 year of my career uh, or rather i would say 24 of corporate career we never did any politics and i i advise people not to get into that it's not worth it so that's something i hate to do mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay great <laughs> same with me actually <laughs> yeah. i can totally relate <laughs> and yeah tell me the nickname your parents used to call you when you were uh, young oh man i didn't see that coming so uh, <laughs> parents actually my nickname uh, was given to me by my uncle so like almost like parent uh, so uh, there's a story behind it when i was born i was i had a lot of baby fat Mm-hmm. right so you know that remained for for 7 8 years so i think because of that my uncle started calling me w so that word w uh, alphabet w for mm-hmm. whatever reasons uh, <laughs> and, and then you know whenever i uh, whenever i go in colony we used to live in a small colony so whenever i'm going to school and all that i still i still carried that uh, baby fat so his friends and all 
people will call me w <laughs> and funny thing is like navin you know even if i go to indor today if i meet those friends they will not call me by my name they don't even know <laughs> they will still or w kya hal chal hai how are you w <laughs> and i i i find it very funny i laugh at it and i love it because yeah. you know, your nickname people who call you by nickname i mean they are very close to you right exactly, yeah, exactly. that's my nickname in in fact i i used to i i named a couple of my engineering friends uh, by different names and all and uh, the names have become so popular they forget their original names actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happens to it happens so a lot of people don't know my Name yeah. Nikesh, right? You know, when I go back, they would. I have two nicknames. One is Sadai, which my parents gave. Uh-huh. So my parents, of course, call me by name by that name. Uh, uh-huh. And then a lot of close friends, uh, they call me by that name. But yeah, a lot of people wouldn't know my real name. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so. Very interesting. And the last one for the rapid fire. G- given a chance, would you prefer going invisible or acquiring super strength? Going invisible. <laughs> What would you do if you go invisible? I mean, you know, you don't have to show off any, to anybody, right? You, you know, uh, if that's what you, you, you meant by invisible, like you know, keep a low profile. I've always kept low profile. Okay. Keep, keep it that way. Yeah. Uh, super strength is like you know, uh, you okay? So if you if you meant by Mister India thing, yeah, yeah, invisible is invisible is great. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, Mister India could do so many things. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Great rapid fire, and let's get back to the mainstream. And before I let you go, one final question: What will be your one piece of advice to those planning to start their own venture who want to be an entrepreneur? Start that. Don't wait. It's a it's the best thing uh, which will happen to you. Of course, you no. Know, take care of lot of things. Be prepared. Uh, as I said, I started it when I, I had retired myself, right? So you know that money problem was not there. So even if I don't make money for another whatever duration i think and i have enough to survive right yeah. but if you are starting at that stage then i think you are playing very safe so you are good but typically you know when you start quitting a job uh, you have a family to run kids are going to school be careful of course you know you, you you should have visibility of 2 3 years you should be able to survive but i would suggest like startup india i mean you know next 10 12 years this is your time leave it or use it Right. Yeah. So starting up today is the best thing. Uh, don't wait. And uh, and another thing, Navin, just to add a little bit to it, you don't have to start up. Go and join a startup. Right. I'll just give. I mean, just to share some example here. Like now, some of the people, I, I had given them stock options that time, 2015 time frame. Those guys are millionaire today. Yeah. Right. And and you know these are not like uh, big shots. They were like you know all. Uh, senior engineer associate engineer and all those things so uh, you don't have to start up a startup at times so you don't have to become entrepreneur if you don't want to do that you know go and join a ch- take a chance with startup it's more or less same yeah. you're like a founder yeah yeah awesome amazing i i thoroughly enjoyed the conversation nikesh thank yeah. you again thank you for coming to the show and sharing your wonderful insights and i would definitely want to call you back again in future with some another exciting topic thanks for your time you. and insights <laughs> thank you navin you have a good one bye bye thank you all everyone. right thank you so folks before we move into the trivia section in case here is a small request to you in case if you haven't subscribed to us please subscribe to the guiding voice from the app where you have tuned in from also if you have loved the episode and found the conversation useful request you to share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who can benefit from the guiding voice thank you so much in advance now let's hop into the trivia segment of today's episode so today we had some enlightening conversation about startups pros and cons of startups and what are the stock options how to waste them how to exercise what are the exit opportunities so on and so forth and i would like to extend a few facts about startups you know the first one is 90% of the people think that startups are only tech based like if you observe large companies like uber google facebook these are all tech based startups that's why most people think that startups are only tech based but there are many other non tech based and popular startups like we work pinterest tinder and many more and the second fact is one in three people starts with about 5000 us dollars in the united states and 58% of the entrepreneurs get started with less than 25000 dollars and uh, startups like selling things online online classes creating an app or game such type of startups can be easily started with about 5000 usd and the last one is 
about 90% of the startups fail while reaching the second year and only 30% survive till 10 years and most of the startups fail mainly due to marketing and budgeting which leads to a failure by the second year and other reasons like could be lack of goal less profit team problems no competitor analysis and many more but overall we need a lot of patience in order to succeed in your venture and at the same time as nikesh mentioned in case if you have good set of founders and co-founders there should be extreme levels of commitment and everybody should believe in their idea because if you don't believe in your idea nobody else will believe so that's all from today and in case if you have any great startup stories do share with us on social media or reach out to us through email the guiding voice for you at greatgmail.com similarly you can also pass me on some topic recommendations or guest speaker suggestions friends i am your host navin samala just a fellow it professional but on a mission to shape the careers and lives of millions across the globe thank you so much for joining me until next time bye bye see you all in the next video